Greetings, you two. Let me say from the get-go that I am not as intelligent as Neil deGrasse Tyson. I am not as well-educated as he is. I am not an astrophysicist. I do not have the level of understanding of physics that he has. Never have, never will. I suck at max. Um, but I heard something recently he said while watching, of all things, the uh, YouTube show Hot Ones, where they uh, ask, uh, interview uh, people while they're eating increasingly hot wings, which is actually really entertaining, and some of the best in, best interviewing questions I have ever heard. Their research department ought to work for the NSA. They find some really deep stuff. Um, but he made a comment about the fact that he had one point in the past got in a bit of a controversy because he had suggested that the perfect packaging shape is the sphere because you get the maximum amount of volume for the minimum amount of surface area. Now he is a hundred percent correct. Do I have any spheres in my in my sphere of influence? I don't know if I have any spheres now that I think about it. Oh I have a really heavy one. I don't want to get oh here's a smaller one. Here's a here's a here's kind of a sphere. It's a it's a snow globe. But the point is it's a sphere. Now, here you are, you are correct. You get the maximum amount of volume with the minimum amount of surface area. And um, this particular sphere is, uh, what is this thing? Is it your, it was a gift. I can't remember where I got it from. There you go. I think it's from New York. Uh, I think my wife may have got it for me as, 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 as I kind of like snow globes. But, um, and if the purpose of shipping purpose of creating a package and then moving package from point A to point B was to maximize the volume for the minimum amount of surface area, you would be correct. But when I heard that question, that statement that he made, I stopped watching that particular episode because it made me so angry. Because it's probably one of the better examples I can think of of someone who's highly educated to the point where they seem to have divorced themselves completely from reality. Because the goal is not to maximize volume by minimizing surface area. I don't know. There's a reason we ship things in this shape. Okay, now I want you to imagine a pallet. Now, some of you may have no experience with pallets. I've been working with pallets for four decades. I am very familiar with pallets. Wooden pallets, plastic pallets, uh, pallets that have come, in, come with built-in sides. Some pallets, they fold flat, but you can snap like plastic sides up. They make ones that have steel grilled, grid, walls for like you put you know reels of stuff or boxes and things those plastic and metal ones that have sides are called gaylords i didn't name them don't blame me um and they're designed to space space under them so you can get four truck four forks under them either for a fork truck or a pallet jack there's a difference a pallet jack is something you pump up or it's electric and lifts and you just drag it across the floor you don't get to go much more than this off the ground just enough to get the object off the ground so you can move it from point a to point b um, a fork truck has forks that go whoop, whoop, lift it up, and you can now pick it up and stack it on top of another thing. You can lift it up real high and put it on a shelf. Fork trucks are far more versatile. They're also much bigger. Um, and I have never used fork trucks, um, but I have used pallet jacks, again, for decades. Um, and I've even had the uh, experience of being in a cherry picker, which is a literally a cage they put you in and they you belt yourself to, and then they a fork truck picks up the cage and lifts you up high into the air, so then you can do something way up there. Yes, I've been in a cherry picture, um, and, and and even under the best circumstances, they're a little nerve-wracking. Um, when they're being driven by idiots, they're dangerous. I, I've had that experience, too. Um, but the goal of a pallet is to move items from one place to another in the maximum amount of material in a convenient shape. So now we're going to talk about an ideal pallet. If physicists can have, have spherical cows, I can have an ideal pallet. Now, the ideal pallet is four foot square and four foot high. Okay, so it's four by four, and it's four feet high. Um, so you get 64 cubic feet of stock in on that pallet. I realize that no pallet in history has been ideal. I don't care. And if you put those into a 40-foot trailer for a semi, you're going to get four of them at the end. Two bottom, two top. Ideal package. And you can do that for 10 rows. You get 40 pallets on a 40-foot trailer. 2,560 cubic feet of materials. Again, a deal. I understand that doesn't actually exist where the rubber meets the road, if you'll pardon the pun talking about semis. Um, 
that, that's what the goal is. The goal isn't to maximize volume by minimizing space. It is about maximizing the volume you can fit into a rectangular space while using cubes, because cubes are the best shape for maximizing the amount of stuff you can fit in a convenient shape that can be easily picked up by a pallet jack or a fork truck. And I get the feeling that Tyson has never used one, has never packed a truck or unpacked a truck. I have done both. When I worked for uh, Toys R Us back in the time when they existed, um, I uh, would unpack trucks every day. That was my job. And we used to joke that the uh, that the guys who packed our trucks would like would like just put the truck tailors like this, they pour the materials in there, and they put them vertical, uh, horizontal, and they let the truck drive, 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 deliver it to us. Because like, when the time they got to us, the contents didn't often look like they would have ever been on a pallet. It was, uh, not to mention, they would do things like put layers of Cabbage Patch dolls when they were hot, and then pile six bikes on top of them. Yeah, 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 you Cabbage Patch dolls were just high when we got them, and they still sold. Um, so I have packed a lot of them. Um, funny aside there, we once got an above ground pool on a shipment, which is a refrigerator sized box, but it wasn't on our manifest. So my boss is like, leave it in the truck, it's not ours. And I think we saw that particular pool three more times. And as far as I know, it may have just spent its entire existence on a truck until the company went out of business. Maybe it's sitting in a parking lot somewhere stored in a, an abandoned trailer with a lonely, pool that never got to anywhere because it wasn't on anyone's manifest. <laughs> that one always cracked me up. And an example of corporate malfeasance. But moving things is about maximizing your volume, not minimizing your surface area. And I know you think I'm beating a dead horse, but it's that kind of philosophy that lets people who do the engineering of the world create things that don't work for the people that have to use the things that have been engineered because the engineers have never used them. The engineers are never going to use them. So they spend their time designing spherical cows in a world that needs pallets that are maximized for volume. And I'm tired, tired, so tired of dealing with engineers that design their spherical cows. And Tyson is just the biggest name I've ever seen that seems to be have fallen into that particular mental trap. Um, also, it makes me fear that he may be falling into the dangerous realm of having engineer's disease. Now, engineer's disease is something I, I don't think I coined the phrase, but it's one I've been championing for a long time. And it's the concept that when someone becomes an expert at one thing, they then come to believe they are experts at many things, or even in the worst case scenarios, experts at everything. When in actuality, they are only experts at one thing. And they will often turn that one sphere of knowledge they have, again, pardon the pun, into a hammer they could then use to beat everything else into the shape they are happy with, even if what they know is not applicable in any way, shape, or form to any you know, venue or any arena of knowledge, except for the thing they're actually an expert in. And I fear that Tyson may be succumbing to that. Um, it is a real world danger. Um, I've seen too many engineers, both in like the realm of the famous who set policies and write books and, and help to like set the zeitgeist for engineers of the future to people I've just met working at companies who sit in offices and design things that I'm going to have to use that aren't going to work because they don't have to use them. And the ramifications is that they'll never have to use them, so there aren't any. What does it matter if that person creates something that causes me physical strain or puts me at danger every single time I have to use it, hundreds of times a day? Nothing. What are the ramifications if they did design something that is very difficult to use in the sense of producing the item it's supposed to produce? Nothing. As long as they have gotten to the point where something can kind of sort of limp along and they can make enough parts and ship them, now we blame the people making that product for the failures that are, have been baked into the design. 
you think I'm talking about my everyday life, you would be correct. Um, but the people who design these things never suffer those ramifications. And Tyson's flippant re response about spheres being the perfect shape for shipping things, he will never be responsible for the fact that, that is a really dumb statement. And most people have never had to deal with pallets and shipping. They don't know what it's like to load a truck. They don't know what it's like to unload a truck. They don't know what it's like to move a pallet around or have to live in a place where fork trucks are a constant danger. That is not their experience, so it has no effect on them. So they can very blithely make comments that are complete and absolute bullshit. Spheres are bad for packaging. And Tyson revealed to me that he has some profound degrees of ignorance. And it made me sad. And I stopped watching the episode and I watched, went and watched one that was far more entertaining and had far less bullshit in it.